Hey everyone and welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So as lawmakers look to raise the debt ceiling, come to some sort of bipartisan solution by next month in June, which again is going to be their deadline. Behind the scenes, there are actually three different proposals that would make huge changes to Social Security. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over all three of those proposals and what's in them, and as well as the chances of them passing as well. But before I dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm, and also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Okay, so before we dive into the main proposals going on right now behind the scenes in regards to Social Security, one of which would actually include a $200 per month increase for Social Security beneficiaries. I wanted to quickly go into this bit piece of news because I find it very interesting. I'm going to try to get through this very quickly so we can get into the news regarding Social Security. But right now in Congress, it looks like they could finally perhaps maybe be banning stocks for lawmakers because this has been a, been a, a huge issue or uh, at least banning the trading of stocks for lawmakers. My apologies. Um, so right now, according to this article, AOC and Matt Gates team up to ban lawmakers from trading stocks. So this is an unusual couple here. AOC, of course, is a far left Democrat and Matt Gates is considered a far right Republican. So it's sort of an unusual pair here coming together to support this bill. So the Bipartisan Restoring Faith in Government Act would ban members of Congress and their spouses independence from making financial investments. Uh, the ability to individually trade stocks erodes the public's trust in government, said Ocasio-Cortez. When members have access to classified information, we should not be trading in the stock market on it. It's really that simple. Meanwhile, Gates told Fox News that AOC is wrong a lot. She'd probably say the same thing about me, but she's not corrupt and I will work with anyone and everyone to ensure that Congress is not so compromised. And of course, a 63% majority of registered voters said they support a ban on stock trading for members of Congress, according to 2022 Morning Consult poll. That includes 69% of Democrats, 64% of independents, and 58% of Republicans. Now, this is a really huge issue because members of Congress for a long time have obviously been participating in some sort of insider trading, allegedly, at least in my opinion. And you can see here, just as an example, this is from a uh, Twitter account uh, called Nancy Pelosi Stock Trader. They're saying that Representative Dan Goldman timed selling Pac W perfectly. Uh, it appears here that he sold on March 6th. And you can see the, the day that he sold on the chart there, right before that huge dip. So he's either the best investor out there to time the sell of that stock just perfectly right before it fell off a cliff. Or perhaps, you know, maybe he had some sort of insider information given that he does work in Congress and he probably knew what was going on behind the scenes and he knew, hey, you probably should sell before the stock drops off. And this is just the first of several examples. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because members of Congress make a good salary. They make $180,000 per year, which is pretty solid all in all. Of course, a lot of these people also have net worths of, you know, millions of dollars. So. Even though they make a good salary, they don't make a good enough salary to be making as much as they are in the stock market. These people aren't Warren Buffett. They aren't expert traders. Obviously, there, I mean, allegedly, there might be some information going on behind the scenes. So we'll have to keep a track on that bill, whether or not they pass it, given the fact that a lot of them might be benefiting from trading stocks, from the information that they're receiving. It's hard saying whether or not they will approve a bill that would ban trading stocks for them, their spouses, and other people. So we'll just have to wait and see on that. Now, in regards to the news on Social Security, I'm now going to be going over the three bills that are currently going on. The first one is called the Social Security 2100, a sacred trust act. This one is led by John Larson. Now we're going to be going, on, going over what's in this bill. So the first thing it would do is it would increase benefits. So there would be a benefit bump for current and new Social Security beneficiaries by an average of right around 2%. It would also protect against inflation by changing the COLA method from the CPIW over to the CPIE. So every single year on average, you should be receiving a slightly bigger increase by right around 0.2%. It would also change the new, the new minimum benefit to 100 and, uh, to 125% of the poverty line or 25% above the federal poverty line. And it would also provide a tax cut for 23 million lower and middle income Americans 
which would reduce their taxes on their Social Security benefits. It would also improve Social Security benefits for widows and widowers in two-income households, so they are not penalized for having two incomes. It would also repeal the uh, WEP and GPO that currently reduces Social Security benefits for many public servants, including teachers, police, and firefighters. There's also another bipartisan bill that would do the exact same thing, so I think that provision is probably more than likely going to pass either way. And it would also end the, fi the five-month waiting period to receive disability benefits, so those with severe disabilities no longer have to wait. It would provide caregiver credits towards Social Security wages to ensure caregivers are not penalized in retirement for taking time out of the workforce to care for children or other dependents. It would also extend Social Security dependent benefits for students to age 26 and for part-time students so they can continue their education. It would increase access to Social Security dependent benefits for children who live with grandparents or other relatives. It would also require SSA to mail annual statements to all workers showing the FICA contributions workers make and projections for their benefits in the future. Again, there's another bill that would do the exact same thing. It would also prevent unwarranted closures of SSA field offices. It would improve access to legal representation for people seeking long-term disability benefits. And it would do all this by raising taxes on those people who earn over $400,000 per year where they would have to pay the Social Security payroll tax, which again, for employees would be 6.2%. For people who are self-employed would be 12.4%. So if you made over $400,000 per year, you'd once again have to uh, begin paying the tax. It would also extend the solvency of Social Security from 2035 to 2044, which really isn't all that long, but there is another bill right now by Bernie Sanders that would extend it closer to 2100 we're going to be going over that bill in just a second so we can look here for the social security 2100 a sacred trust act right now on congress.gov it has not yet been reintroduced in 2023 so it would need to be reintroduced in order for it to be uh, voted on and passed so we can see right now it did have 202 co-sponsors which was very significant that of course is back in 2021 2022 in the last congress so this bill you know, if if it, if it was uh, if if Democrats had a majority in the House and a supermajority in the Senate, it would most definitely pass. Again, you can see all the people who co-sponsored the bill were Democrats. There was not a single Republican. So the fact that Republicans really aren't on board with this bill, it's not all that likely to pass because the Republicans have the majority in the House. Now, another bill that we're going to be going over is Bernie Sanders' Social Security Expansion Act. This one has been very much popular. So the first thing that it would do is it would extend the solvency of Social Security for 75 years by making it so those who earn over $250,000 per year would have to pay the Social Security payroll tax of 6.2 to 12.4%. It would also increase benefits by $200 every single month. That's probably the most popular thing in this bill. In fact, if you poll members of both parties, if you poll Republican voters and Democrat voters, both sides of the aisle are on board with this bill. However, Republican lawmakers aren't so much on board with the bill. We'll go over that later. It would also increase the COLAs. So it would change, uh, like in John Larson's bill, it would change the way they figure the COLAs from the CPIW method over to the CPIE method. So every single year, you would be receiving slightly higher adjustments. It would also improve the special minimum benefit for Social Security recipients to 125% of the federal poverty line. It would restore student benefits up to age 22 for children of disabled or deceased workers. It would also combine the Disability Insurance Trust Fund with the Old Age and Survivors Trust Fund to help senior citizens and people with disabilities. And we can look at this bill on congress.gov right now. We can see in the Senate, the bill that was introduced by Bernie Sanders currently has nine co-sponsors. They are all Democrats, however, not a single Republican lawmaker is co-sponsoring this bill. And in the House, it has a lot of support as well, 31 co-sponsors, but again, they are all Democrats. And given the fact that Republicans aren't on board with this bill and Republicans have the majority in the House, it's unlikely to pass in the House. It's also unlikely to pass in the Senate, given the fact that they would need 60 votes in the Senate and there are no Republican lawmakers on board with it in the Senate. They would need at least probably nine Republicans to get on board and vote yes. And even though it's very popular among Republican voters, if we look at polling, Republican lawmakers aren't getting on board with this bill because they are against increasing taxes, even those who earn over 250 
dollars per year. Now, the final proposal going on right now behind the scenes is not yet in the form of a bill. It's more so a proposal. They're sort of coming up with what they would do. It's a bipartisan one, though. So we have Republicans and Democrats working together. It's being headed by Bill Cassidy. He's a Republican in Louisiana, a senator. And then Angus King, who is an independent, but he caucuses and usually votes for things the Democrats vote for. And then, of course, we have other Republican and Democrat lawmakers working with them to come up with this, this uh, proposal. So basically what they would do, they may or may not be raising the, the full retirement age to 70. Some say they are, some say they aren't. If they do that, more than likely Democrats aren't going to vote for the bill. So at the end of the day, if they want, a, if they want this bill to pass, more than likely they're going to have to keep the full retirement age as is, as 67, which I think they should also do because, uh, you know, the life expectancy really isn't all that long. And if you have to wait until the age of 70 to start collecting your full retirement benefits, obviously that's going to be very hurtful, especially for people who work heavy labor, you know, blue collar jobs, and they're going to be more than ready to retire by the age of 67. So if you're going to tell them they have to wait a few more years, obviously that's going to be quite unfair. But the main gist of this bill is to have sort of a sovereign wealth fund where they're taking $1.5 trillion of funds separate from the ones going into social security, and they're investing the $1.5 trillion and they're going to seek to receive an 8% net positive return each and every year. And if they're able to achieve that, they'll make it so the fund will not go insolvent by 2033, and it will fully fund itself for a longer period of time. And they're saying that if this fund is extra successful, then it's very possible that beneficiaries of Social Security could actually receive an increase. We don't really know how much this increase would be because, again, we don't know how good of returns the Sovereign Wealth Fund will get. So it may or may not be as much as $200 per month, uh, but the main gist of this is to make it so people receive their full benefits, whatever they're supposed to receive, and the fund won't go insolvent by 2033. But again, this is just a proposal. It has not even worked its way into a bill. And when it does work its way into a bill, we will have to make sure that we get enough Republicans and Democrats on board with the bill for this thing to pass. And again, there has to be a sense of urgency. 2033 is still 10 years away. So they may just continue kicking this can down the road until the very last second, very much like they are with the debt ceiling where they're just sort of playing a game of chicken and we're at risk of default, but they're not really doing anything about it, at least for now. But those are the three bills that I wanted to talk about. Let me know in the comment section below which one of these three bills you would be most on board with passing. And thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way through, I definitely appreciate you. If you enjoyed the content in today's video, again, I would greatly appreciate if you could give this video a like. Consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already, and I will see you in the next video.